All right, everybody, coming at you with part two of my lecture webinar, How to Build a Better Physique, How to Build a Better Body. In part one, I showed you the research that eliminated elements like um, it's a matter of protein turnover and growth hormone and, and testosterone after your workouts. And we showed that none of that really matters. And then we also showed neither does it matter how much weight you lift that it's not about load it's about muscle recruitment muscle fiber recruitment and activation so we looked at it on a very uh, micro reductionist um, stage now we're going to look at it on a more macro level because people who uh, read my work i get constant questions about well, what do you mean by surfing the curve and what do you mean about riding the wave well let me use this quote and we'll put it up on the screen for you you have to surf the curve in order to ride the wave now this has to do with not only workout within the workout interworkout uh, notions of proper workout design but it also has to do with program design hence why I have the program design masterclass when a program is well written it means that you don't get to ride the wave until you're about seven or eight weeks into a program. What I mean by that, we call that the mastery phase of programming. When a program is well written, I like, I like to use the surfing metaphor, whether I get it right or not really doesn't matter. So if you think of a surfer, first they have to swim out, paddle out on their board to get to the waves, and then they get on the board and surf and then ride the wave. It's the same notion with proper program design for physique development, and you have to think of it that way. The first several weeks of a program are about getting out there in order to find that wave and surf the curve to get there, and then ride that wave once you're there. So what's the surfing the curve all about? Surfing the curve is what we explained before. It's all about the rep ranges that are known to facilitate muscle hypertrophy and overload in the most effective way. So the rep ranges tend to be six to eight, eight to 10, 10 to 12, 12 to 15, 15 to 20 and 20 and as long as the degree of effort as in intensity is constant then those rep ranges all serve as a function to build muscle one rep range not necessarily being any better than the other so within a program or within a workout it's often a good idea to surf the curve of these rep ranges all the way from six to eight all the way up to 20 with specific exceptions depending on the purpose of a given program or another program so we surf the curve in order to ride the wave and then you once you get to like seventh or eighth week of a program where you no longer have to think about what exercise comes after what exercise and your body has been acclimated and adopting to the workout stress of the program as it goes along then you are in what we call the mastery phase of a program and then that's when you get the most adoptive benefits but most people don't do that. They don't think in terms of programs. They think in terms of workouts. So they think about leaving it all on the floor or doing this class today and doing another class over here tomorrow. And then they're not getting any benefits of any amalgamation of training effects in terms of adoptive response. So when we talk about program design, we talk about riding the wave after several weeks of getting out to that wave to begin with by surfing the reps curve and that's what leads to good and facilitates good muscle hypertrophy and physique development most people just can't even begin to understand those terms so i try to use analogies also when riding the wave remember Programs that are designed for physique development are not necessarily programs designed for maximum strength loads. There's a difference between powerlifting and bodybuilding. A lot of people will get to the mastery phase of a program and then that's when they think they should change their program and they lose all the benefits because they never actually get to riding the wave. What do I mean by that? I'll have people write me eight or nine weeks into a program and they'll say, well, 
uh, none of my weights are going up anymore. And they consider that in their head as a sign of the program being less effective. It's not a sign of anything because those programs aren't designed for that purpose of weights going up in a linear week to week segment. They're not competing in a powerlifting meet. They're designing a physique. So what is more important than that quantitative element than my weights aren't going up anymore is mastery and efficiency of workout execution. So when you master a program, that's the phase at which you are riding the wave, the crescendo, the crescent of that actual program. And you have to stay in that phase of riding a wave for weeks and weeks and weeks. Too many trainees, especially the younger ones and the neophytes, get all wrapped up in workouts and all wrapped up in writing down how much weight they lift and they never understand something like an adoptive phase of training. They're in too big a hurry to go to the next workout or the next program without realizing the efficiency of program design dictates that a program should be allowed to run its course and that can take anywhere from 12 to 16, even 20 weeks, even more. I stayed on my Hard Gainer Solution program for almost two years. I stayed on my Physique After 50 program uh, for about 18 months uh, before I ever switched them up. So you get to a certain point in a Physique Development program, remember, not a strength program, and to start thinking my weights aren't going up anymore, I'm not getting anything out of this, that's mistaken thinking. You've got to surf the curve and then you've got to ride the wave and that takes time in order to elicit an adoptive response. So it's very, very important. And also, all of you, most of you, aren't going to be destined to be lifting a lot of weight anyway. What am I talking about? Well, how strong you can be in terms of limit strength, limit strength being how much weight you can lift one time maximum, as in how much can you bench, that kind of stuff. That is pretty much preset by how you were born and how you develop in terms of tendon shortness and thickness and ligament strength, tendons, uh, ligament strength and thickness as well. The thicker and shorter your ligaments, then the stronger your potential is to get strong and lift heavy, heavy weight. Also, if you're tall and lanky, you're not likely to be able to be a very good power lifter. Look on a basketball floor and look at centers and look at basketball players who are 6 feet 8, 6 feet 10. You're not likely to see a set of well-developed calves anywhere on the floor, and yet most of these guys can fly. So it's not a function of how big are your calves, meaning that that translates into uh, strength and power. It doesn't. So you've got to start realizing these things. Take someone like protege Andy Sinclair, for instance. We'll throw a couple pictures up of Andy right now on the screen. Andy at six foot four, very long limbs, really long arms, really long legs. Had he come to me in his initial years and said, I want to be a power lifter, well, I would have trained him for that. And we would have bulked him up and I would have given him limit strength programs rather than bodybuilding programs or physique development programs. And he would have got to a certain level, but he wouldn't have got beyond that because he's not built for that sport. Longer legs and longer limbs means that he has to move a weight through an entirely greater range of motion than someone else with shorter limbs. So you can be born to do certain sports. Go back to our basketball example again. A seven-foot basketball player is never going to be able to be a jockey in a horse race. He just doesn't meet the standards and he wouldn't be very good at it and he wouldn't be very good at powerlifting. So the same rules apply. So to look at mid-program that your weights aren't going up anymore without questioning whether the program you're on is even, de even designed for strength to go up week to week anyway is a mistaken notion of an imprint of the macho bullcrap stuff in the fitness industry that gets handed down that your weight should always be going up week to week in a linear fashion without ever looking at the program. If your program, like my Hard Gainer Solution, the book you see behind me here, is a program that's designed to actually surf the curve of those rep schemes that we talked about, going all the way up to 20 reps and 15 to 20 reps, then mastery 
of workout execution is what matters as you're riding the wave in those later weeks. It's not about whether your lifts are going up or not going up because you're not on that kind of program where that kind of thing matters to begin with. So these are really, really important elements to keep in mind. It's sort of part one. We looked at the myth that how much weight is on the bar contributes to uh, maximum or even minimum um, physique development. So we looked at that at the reductionist level and we looked at the myth that how much you lift you know that train for strength and development will come I sort of debunked that you can go back to that uh, lecture all you want maybe we'll post the link here to that YouTube lecture that was just up recently but in this one we're talking about terms that have more to do separate from the workout we have terms that have to do with understanding program design and program phases that take place over an accumulated amount of time. So I use the surfer analogy. First, you have to surf the reps curve. And then after so many weeks on a program, you get to ride the wave. And that's what we call the mastery phase. And you have to ride that out until that wave disappears. And that can take weeks. Too many people destroy any potential benefit of a program by not being patient enough and thinking they always need to change and they always need to change as long as you are surfing the reps curve within a protocol then all you have to do is get to that mastery phase and ride the wave hopefully that makes sense I explain a lot more about this in my course program design masterclass where we break down programs what they're for how they're instituted but a lot of this is just mistaken conceptions among the consumer and one of those being that if your weights aren't going up week to week uh, then you're no longer making progress and not even questioning if you're even on a strength program to begin with most of the time if you're on a physique development program then whether or not your weights go up is relative to other things but riding the wave and surfing the curve are very important elements to understanding program design and we also need to discuss three realms of time that have to do with everything nutrition metabolism and also adoptive response to training and that is the immediate realm of time the residual realm of time and the cumulative around amount of time most trainees when it comes to working out they think only of the workout today which is the immediate realm of time they don't think about the residual realm of time which is about recovery from that workout stimulus from the next workout and then they don't think about the cumulative realm of time which is what happens by applying this stimulus week to week month to month over a period of time so that's really really important it helps if you understand certain phrases um, and certain analogies in order to get you to understand that adoptive response isn't just today in today's workout it's a cumulative thing that takes place over time and once your body stops having to learn how to install a program or within a workout to do an exercise then you're getting to that mastery phase where things become more automatic and you get to ride the wave so even though you're doing the same exercise for the same sets and the same reps you're getting a lot more out of it by doing so so don't be in a hurry to change your programs especially if they're well designed programs and that means especially if they're programs designed by yours truly so hopefully you understand that the terms surfing the curve and riding the wave and that you have to surf the curve in order to ride the wave when it comes to training for physique development Hope that makes sense and uh, check out my previous webinar on that as well about um, how it's not a matter of load that determines muscle hypertrophy. It's a matter of fiber recruitment and angles and ranges and planes of motion of contraction. Like I've said several times, for a review, just go to the movie Pumping Iron and tell me anywhere where you see them running over to a training log after doing a set and writing down how much they lifted. So you got to get that out of your mind, even though it's a myth that keeps perpetuating itself decade after decade. Only at the higher levels do people realize that that is nonsense. So remember, get familiar with the term surfing the curve and riding the wave, and I'll see you in the next video.